On the 10th of May, 1874, a passenger steamer called the Strathowen departed the port of Colombo, Sri Lanka, bound for Madras, India. The ship travelled south around the southernmost tip of the island before turning north to enter the Bay of Bengal. It's reported that when the ship was off the coast of Trincomalee, they sighted a schooner named Pearl off their starboard side. On viewing the Pearl with his binocular, a passenger noticed a large dark mass floating on the ocean between them and the schooner, which he initially took to be a bank of seaweed. However, as he watched, the mass began to move quickly towards the Pearl, striking it violently and causing the schooner to sway back and forth eventually being capsized and dragged under the surface by the mysterious mass. The captain of the Pearl, James Floyd, and four surviving crew members were pulled from the water by the Strathowen. Captain Floyd recalled the incident to his rescuers as follows. A great mass rose slowly out of the sea, about half a mile off our starboard side, and remained spread out and stationary. It looked like the back of a huge whale, but sloped less, and was of brownish color. Even at that distance, it looked longer than our craft, and seemed to be basking in the sun. What's that? I asked the mate. I don't know. Barring its size, color, and shape, it might be a whale, replied Tom Scott. It ain't the serpent, said one of the crew. He's too round for that critter. At this point, Captain Floyd rushed to his cabin to fetch his rifle. When he returned to the deck, he hurriedly took aim at the advancing creature. As it happened, there was a Newfoundlander among the crew called Bill Darling, who not only knew that it was a giant squid, but also understood that bullets were ineffectual against such soft flesh and merely served to enrage. Darling held up his hand in warning and advised the captain that it was a squid and was capable of capsizing the ship if provoked. Regrettably, Captain Floyd took no notice of the sailor, with disastrous and tragic consequences. The captain candidly related, I let fly and hit him, and with that he shook. There was a great ripple all around him and he began to move. Bill Darling then shouted to the rest of the crew to arm themselves with axes or knives and cut at any part of the creature that came aboard. Not aware of the danger, and never having seen or heard of such a monster, Captain Floyd gave no orders and made no attempt to take the helm or ropes in order to get out of the way. By this time three of the crew, Bill included, had found axes and one a rusty cutlass, and all were looking over the ship's side at the advancing monster. We could now see a huge oblong mass moving by jerks just under the surface of the water, and an enormous train following. The wake or train might have been 100 feet long. The brute struck us, and the ship quivered under the thud. In another movement, monstrous arms like trees seized the vessel and she keeled over. In another second, the monster was aboard, squeezed in between the two masts. Bill Darling screamed at the crew to slash for your lives, but all our slashing was to no avail, for the brute, holding on by his arms, slipped his vast body overboard and pulled the vessel down with him. We were thrown into the water, and just as I went over, I caught sight of one of the crew, either Bill or Tom Fielding, squashed up between the masts and one of those awful arms. After a few seconds, the pearl filled with water and went under, along with the hapless Bill Darling and Tom Fielding. Captain Floyd and the four surviving crew members were picked up by the Strathowen. All were eager to tell their rescuers of the horrific experience they had undergone. According to the passenger quoted earlier, each narrator had his own version of the story, but in the main, all the narratives tallied so remarkably as to leave no doubt of the fact. The incident was recounted in Episode 2 of Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World.